Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part two for our Godot random level generation series. We're still working on the Walker level generation. In the last video, we set up this project right here, uh, where you can generate random levels. These levels aren't very clean, and depending on the type of game that you're wanting to make, you might want your levels to look cleaner than this. These are pretty random, uh, and so that's... I'm going to... I'm going to come in here. I'm still noticing the flickering, so I'm going to try turning on the NVIDIA flicker workaround. I think that'll probably help. So these are pretty these are pretty messy, and so maybe this is something that you want for your game. Maybe you want your levels to be a bit more messy like this. You know, like if this were an ant colony or something, they would probably have messier tunnels like this. If you want it to feel more like a dungeon, we're going to do we're going to make some changes today that will help it feel that way and let me show you what that's going to look like here. Uh let me grab this real quick. Comment out a couple things here. Here we go. Run this and here you go. So, this is still using a walker level generation system, but you can see it has a little bit more uh it looks a little bit more uniform. We've got some different rooms with slightly different sizes and uh, hallways that kind of connect those rooms. And I'm gonna show you how I set up a system like this. And you still don't get, you know, perfectly, the dungeons aren't always perfect, but this is a, still a walker level generation system and you tend to get dungeons that are a little bit more sporadic with this system. So let's talk about the algorithm for how this setup works. Basically with this setup, every time you make a turn, you create a room in that turn. And you create the room with different sizes, and that gives you this. Sometimes you create multiple rooms and they kind of overlap each other, but that's okay. You can get kind of bigger rooms this way with some interesting connections to them. And so let's get started with that. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is come into our walker right here, and at the end of this, we're gonna add a new function called create room. And when we create the room, we want to create it in a specific position, so we'll pass in that variable here, position. And we can create it with a specific size, and you, can, you could have it pass in the size if you wanted, but I'm just gonna have it create a size inside of the function here. And so the size that I'm going to do here, var size, is going to be vector2 rand i or plus 2 rand i or plus 2. So it's a vector for the size and it's going to get a random integer between two and six, or two plus four, right? And so let's look at the documentation for randi real quick so you can understand this code a little bit better. Randi returns a random 32-bit integer, so you get a really giant number if you just call a randi. However, if you use this operator here, pretty sure it's the mod operator, uh, you can you can get an integer between a certain value. And so randi mod 20 gives you 19, like the, or zero, be a number between 0 and 19, right? And so in ours right here, we have randi mod 4. That means we're going to get a number between 0 and 3. So 0, 1, 2, or 3. However, if you add to that, then you can get numbers between... Like if you add one here, then you get between one and 100 instead of between zero and 99, like we see up here. And so we can easily get, this will give us an, we're adding two, so that's gonna get us, actually I lied, it's, it's gonna get us a number between, it's gonna get us a number between two and five. Well, let's see, two and six. Two and six is what my gut tells me, but Let's see, one and 100. So if I added two, it would be two. 
it would be 2 in 101. So yeah, I think it is 2 in 5 here. Gives us a number between 2 and 5. But either way, we get two numbers randomly uh, chosen between 2 and 5 for this size. That way our rooms aren't always squares. They can be rectangles sometimes. Okay, now we can move on to the next step, which is getting the top left corner of this room. That way we can have the room centered on our current position. So var top left, or top left corner equals, and this is gonna be our current position, position minus the size divided by two. However, that will get us a, this will get us a float value. So if our room size is five, for example, we'll get like an, a value that is, you know, like negative 2.5 or whatever. And so we don't want that. We can't have that value. We need to use a round or a, I'm gonna use a seal function here, which will just take this vector and push the values up to their maximum. So if it's, you know, negative 2.5, then it's going to become 2. If it's 2.5, then it's going to become 3. It's just going to always push them to the ceiling, the values. So that'll get us our top left corner. Once we have that, we can loop through each, each point in our room and add those points to our step history. So we'll say 4y in size.y. 4x in size dot x. And this is a double for loop, and that will allow us to loop through the positions in a grid. A single for loop will get you a one dimensional loop, and a double for loop will give you a two dimensional loop and allow you to loop through a grid. Now we're going to say var new step equals top corner, top left corner plus vector two, and we're going to pass in our x and our y. Now we only want to add this to our step history if it's inside of our borders. That way we don't add stuff outside of the borders. We'll say if borders dot has point new step then step history append new step. There we go. That should allow us to only add these when we, when they're inside of our borders. Now, when are we going to add a room? Well, we're going to do it every time we change directions. Let's see, we do have a change direction here at the very end. Else change direction. So we'll put it in here. We'll just, inside of our change direction function, we'll do create room. And we also want to create a room right when we initialize, like at the very start of calling walk here. We'll just call create room. So that's the starting room. Okay. And oh, we have to give them both the position. So make sure you pass in our position to both of these. There we go. Now if we run the game, we're going to get rooms. However, these rooms are massive uh, compared with our how often we turn. And that's why we're getting this behavior. It doesn't look quite as good. So a couple things we want to do. Let's come into our world and let's make it not walk as far. Let's set this to 200 instead of 500. We don't need to take as many steps now because we're generating large rooms. Then we can come into here and we can set step since last turn and instead of doing greater than or equal to four we'll set this to six and tweak that value a little bit and now we're already doing a little bit better but we're still struggling in fact this is struggling more than i would expect so we'll have to look at that but one of the things that i've that i changed was instead of having a random chance we could, instead of doing or here, we could do, well, let's, let's just remove the random chance completely. Actually, I want to experiment just a bit. This is, 
branch this is going off of the going off the script a little bit here i want to try making this an and and seeing what that does huh kind of interesting So it's fun to play with these values and see what you get. You get really long hallways this way. So we might want to increase, like you could lower, you could increase the chances here. So make this 0.5 or so. We could increase the chances of getting a turn once you get past six, but not always turn. And this gives us pretty good level generation. It's a little bit less uniform than what I was showing you before. So if you want it to be a little bit less static, a little more random looking, this would be the way to go. It creates some pretty interesting levels. I actually like this. I like this too. But now let's do what I have in my other, my other example, which is in my reference project, which is where I just take out the randomness completely. So it, it turns every six it will, it's guaranteed to turn every six steps. And taking that out gives you a much more uniform level every single time. And this is what I have in my reference project that I showed at the start of the video. So this is a pretty interesting level generation system. I actually, a little while back, I used the same algorithm inside of GameMaker and made a level generation system like this for a platformer. And in the platformer, you could wall jump in order to climb walls, like you could essentially wall jump all the way up this. And, and so it made some pretty interesting platforming levels. I think I made, it gave it a higher chance of going to the right. Uh, or t maybe I, I think I had it so that it never went to the left. So it always, it, it basically picked between to the right up and down. So all the levels went left to right. And uh, that was another change that I did to it. So it's kind of interesting to see how, how you can get different, how tweaking the values just a little bit in these walker systems can get you completely different outputs for your randomness. And messing with that is one of the fun things about it, I think trying to figure out how to mess with them to get something that works for your game and the type of project that you're working on. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and learned something from it. If you did, be sure to give the video a like and subscribe to my channel for more Godot content. I'll be posting more in the next little while. I'd like to, a lot of the comments for this series, you guys have mentioned exploring stuff like different types of level generation. Uh, basically, there's been two routes that I've seen. People either want to see me expand on this system more or explore other systems. And I think at the moment, I want to try and expand on this system more and, and not expand on it a ton, but at least expand on it by maybe, you know, showing how to generate start and finish positions, showing how to, uh, create, generate enemies in specific rooms possibly, and generate treasure rooms, stuff like that. So adding a little bit more to this system, talking about what different solutions for that, what you might do. That's the direction I'm leaning towards right now. Uh, interesting thing in, in, for example, Nuclear Throne, they actually didn't generate an end position. Uh, when you go through the level, you destroy all the enemies and the very last enemy creates a portal that takes you to the next level. And that was a sneaky way for them to get around having, you know, the end door generate right next to the start door by mistake. Uh, they just force you to kill the enemies. Once you do, then it generates the end door for you. So it's interesting to see developer solutions for these things and, and the, diff the many different ways you can solve uh, the same problem essentially in the level generation. So I'd like to explore that a little bit more in this series, I think, and then we'll look into maybe doing some other level types of level generation, random level generation as well. So thank you all so much for watching it and I will talk to you all later.